Today's video is sponsored by Automatic Creates. Lately, I've been thinking back to Tesla's Investor Day 2023 presentation, and particularly the new way that they're going to be creating their vehicles, the unboxed method where they're able to actually create modular parts of the vehicle and plug it all together. And this reminded me of software development with which I'm much more familiar, and the way that APIs are key to modern software development and how that's being implemented in hardware development as well now. And also the Model 3 long range is available in the United States again, but there's a twist Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Before I get to the unboxed method of producing Tesla's vehicles in the future, it looks like they're going to start with the Cybertruck and then they're definitely going to be doing it with the Model 2 or whatever they call this new vehicle that will begin manufacture in Mexico in the next couple of years. But first I wanna draw your attention to the fact that the Model 3 Long Range is back online again in the United States. It has not been available since I think August of last year, so it's been a long time. But anyway, if you go on the Tesla website and load this up, you can see that there is the rear wheel drive Model 3, which is 40,240, the Model 3 Long Range for 47,240, and the Model 3 Performance for 53,240. So this is really great news that there's a long range version again, but the really interesting part of this is in the pricing, because if you'll notice this, by the way, it says 325 plus miles for this. The old long range used to be, I think about 350 miles. So this is substantially less than the old long range, unless it's a big plus. But anyway, the wrinkle comes in, in the fact in the United States at least, that these two models, the standard range and the long range, only qualify for the $3,750 tax credit, while the performance version qualifies for the full $7,500 tax credit. And if we take a look at the Model Y order page, we can see that all of these models qualify for the full $7,500 tax credit in the United States. And so you can see here $47,240 for the standard range Model Y. The Model Y long range is $50,000 240 and the Model Y performance is 54240. So the prices are the prices, but how do these things stack up after you look at the tax credits? Good thing I made a spreadsheet. So let's take a look at all of this stuff laid out here. You can see the Model 3 standard range, long range and performance, Model Y standard range, long range and performance. And here are the costs. And you can see that the least expensive Model Y standard range is around, in fact, it's exactly the same price as the Model 3 long range now. So you can get a standard range Model Y for the same price as a long range Model 3. But the really interesting thing comes in when you take account of the different tax credits. So if we look over here, minus the IRA tax credit in the US, and remember these guys are only 3750, and the other four of these are $7,500. And so if you look, of course, the standard range is still the cheapest vehicle that you can purchase, the cheapest Tesla that you can purchase at an effective cost of $36,500. But then the really interesting thing is that the next most cheapest vehicle that you can purchase from Tesla is the $39,740 Model Y standard range. So that, as you might expect, is cheaper than the Model 3 long range, but then it gets really interesting because the Model Y long range is actually $750 cheaper than the Model 3 long range. So think about that for just a minute here. We've got two versions of the Model Y, the standard range and the long range that are cheaper than the Model 3 long range. And this is rather astounding, honestly, because this means that Tesla is obviously pushing the Model Y as hard as they can. They want to make this the most attractive car possible. So really the only way to go cheaper than a Model Y at this point is to get the Model 3 standard range, which is what we did, of course, and we purchased it before the reduction in the tax credit. So we got it for an effective price of $35,000. So I feel pretty good about that still. And of course, if you go back to the Tesla order page, you can see that the Model Y long range is actually rated to five miles more than the Model 3 long range. So they are really positioning the Model Y long range as the main consumer vehicle. If you're doing your shopping and you're looking for the best value, the Model Y long range is clearly the best value. It's a bigger car, has a little bit longer range, and it costs less money than a sedan vehicle. So clearly the Model 3 long range, at least in its current iteration, is designed for enthusiasts and people who want the more sedan type stuff 
styling, the slightly sporty or driving, all of that kind of stuff. But it's really fascinating to see how Tesla has adjusted these prices to be sure that the Model Y looks as appealing as possible. Now, we'll look at this again in a few weeks or months since Tesla is continuously adjusting their pricing. It's quite possible that the Model 3 long range might come down substantially in the next month or so or something like that. So it might be cheaper again. But currently Tesla's product lineup is a fascinating mix of intertwining the two versions of this vehicle and showing that the Model Y is actually cheaper than the Model 3, at least the long range and the performance for most variations of the vehicles. And even the performance versions of the vehicles are only off by $1,000 as well. So there's not a big difference between them anymore. In just a minute, we'll talk about how Tesla's manufacturing process is driven by modern software development techniques. But first, a word from Artomatic Creates. Hey y'all, if you don't know, I'm not just Dr. Know-It-All on YouTube, but I'm also CEO and co-founder of Artomatic.io, and we have an amazing new product for you. It's called Artomatic Creates. What we're doing is leveraging the best of AI technology with the human touch. So we're able to scale out and do amazing projects like create custom art just for you or text from social media posts to SEO optimized ads to blogs to internal reports to white papers and on. On and on. Basically anything that you can imagine doing, we can create it and we can create it faster and cheaper than just about anybody else. And we can do this because we are expert at utilizing AI tools. And then we review the output of these AI tools to create the best product possible for your exact needs. And not only do you get what you want, but you get it fast. As opposed to industry standard best practices, which can take weeks and cost thousands and thousands of dollars, we can do it in a day or two for a fraction of that cost. And better yet, if if you don't love it, you get your money back. So what are you waiting for? Let us help you realize your creative visions. All right, so I wanna talk about how Tesla has positioned their new manufacturing process versus the old one. The old one, or honestly the current one, is a very inefficient method of putting a car together painting that car, taking the car back apart again, and then doing individual things to it, and then putting the car back together again. It's a serial process where each step has to wait for the step before it to happen, including things like painting the vehicle and stuff, which takes a long time because there's multiple coats. There's a lot of time waiting for the paint to dry, and then you have to put more coats on and more coats on, etc. So this is a very, very inefficient and serialized way of making vehicles. And here you can see in graphical form, Tesla talking about that. So this is their current way of assembling a vehicle. You put it all together, you paint it, you take it back apart again, et cetera, et cetera. It's very, very inefficient. And then we get to the new method that's going to be pioneered by the Cybertruck, but is going to come into its own with their Model 2 vehicle, whatever the heck this is called. I really wish they would give it a name so we could actually call it the proper name. But anyway, we'll just call it Model 2. But anyway, you can see that what they're doing is they're modularizing things. So you're not working on the entire car, you're working on a piece of the car. And so you can have more dense operators. You can also use Optimus, as people have talked about, and you have a space efficiency as well as a density of worker efficiency. And even even better, the fully unboxed mode of building the car means that it's parallel. It's It has a parallel component in addition to the serial component. So you do things like stamping and painting before you ever build the vehicle. You don't build it and then paint it. You do stamping and painting, you do casting, all of that kind of stuff. And then you have left side, right side floor, front, rear, other. You have all of these elements of the vehicle that are coming together and being plugged into each other at the same time. So you can build all of these pieces in their own individual workstations. And here's a graphical way of looking at this, right? You can build the rear of the vehicle by itself. You can build the battery pack plus the seats. They're kind of doing this already with the structural battery pack. You can build the external components of the car that have to be cast or stamped and then painted. You can build those once and not have to put the whole car together, paint it, take it back apart again, and do all of that stuff. And then of course you can build the drivetrain and all of that stuff in the front as well. So what does this have to do with modern software development and APIs? Well, basically when you're doing modern modern software development, a lot of what you're doing is calling on the functionality of other things. If you've been hearing about OpenAI's APIs for their plugins, that would be a recent example. But basically what that is, is a call. You could say, for example, I want the model chat GPT-4 or something, and then you give it a bunch of parameters that are called for, and that then goes into the back end. It does something and it returns a value to you. 
But the critical part for us, regardless of what these APIs are doing, is how they function with each other. When you make a function or API call, what you're doing is using a known stable interface. So you're taking something and you know that you have to provide this with like three things or you know whatever that is. So you're calling the API and it says, I need the X position, the Y position and something else, right? So you're giving it this information that it needs and then it returns a result that is in a very specific format that you can expect and then you can utilize going forward. And rather than just do some hand waving, let me actually do a very, very simple example in Python using Google's Colab. And if you have a Google account and who doesn't have one of those these days, you can go to colab.research.google.com and you can do this yourself if you want. It'll just pop this up, say that you want a Jupyter notebook and you can start typing Python code. So obviously we're not gonna do a full fledged API here. That would be ridiculous for this example. But what I'm gonna do is define a function that does a multiplication and returns a result. It's a very, very simple function. So we can go def multiply, and then we need maybe x input and y input, and then we are going to define what this function is. So we'll say result equals x times y, and return result. So all we're doing here is, and let's just run this and make sure that it actually is working. Oh yeah, cool. <laughs> so I'll move this over a little bit. You get the little check mark, you know, always nice to know that things are going well. So anyway, we run this and what we're doing here is we're defining a function. You could imagine this as a super rudimentary API here. It's only got one function call that you're calling, but basically we're saying define this function multiply. You give it two inputs. This is the important part. You're giving it X and Y as your inputs. The result, which is a variable, is X times Y, and you return the result back to your main function. If we now click on code, we can add another little piece of code and we can say multiply and it already has that filled in. Three, let's do three comma four. Whoa, four, I don't know why. Anyway, let's do that. So let's do multiply three comma four, and we get 12. That would be the correct answer, yay. So what you've got here is this is where you can imagine the two pieces of the car coming together. You've got a known stable interface, which is that this this thing called multiply, this function called multiply needs two inputs. It needs an X and a Y and it will return an output, which is a single number. So that's the basis of this whole thing, right? That's the known stable interface and that's the ability. Imagine this in hardware that you have a bunch of connectors, you have tabs, you have things like that that all slot together and then they fit together in exact same way every single time. And that allows the car to be put together. If you wanted to be super in efficient, you could build one part of the car in another state and ship it in and then put those together, right? So you can do that because you have these known stable interfaces. But this is where the interesting part comes in. Let's redefine multiply to be something else besides what it was. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do multiply, but I'm going to do it by adding instead of multiplying. So let's set result equals to zero. This is a much more, you know, long way of doing this, but whatever, it's, it's to prove a point here. We'll say for I in range X. All right. And then, and then we will say result, oops, plus equals, oh my goodness, if I can type, I can never type while people are watching. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're setting result to zero. Remember, we're returning the result. And what we're going to do is we're gonna iterate on X. So in this case, you know, it's three comma four. So three times zero, one, and two, as it turns out, we're going to add Y to the to, to zero, to the result, right? So the first time we go through, it will add four to zero, which is four. The second time it'll go through it and it'll add four to four, which is eight. And the third time it'll add four to eight, which is 12. So we should get the exact same result. So let's run this, make sure that works. And then let's go ahead and run multiply and look at that. We get the exact same result. So the important thing to take away from this is what we have is a known stable interface. I changed this entire internal part. Everything inside of this function is now different than it was originally, but the result is the same and the call is the same. I did not have to modify this at all because I still only need two inputs, X and Y, and I'm going to return one number, which is the result. So I can run this thing and I could change this into all sorts of crazy things and I can still run this multiply without ever having to worry about what's going on internally with this function. And so now if we flip back here, you can see this unbox process 
process, all of these things have to fit together. Now, it's not software anymore, it's hardware. So you might have electrical connections, you might have places where, again, metal tabs fit within other tabs so that you can then weld them into place. You could spot weld them or you could put bolts through them or something like that. But all of those have to remain the same. And so maybe you've got like one, two, three, four bolts across the side of this battery pack plus seating unit, but you could change the entire interior of this unit. You could change out the batteries to be different batteries. You could change the seats to be different seats than they used to be. Maybe you can even change the center console and make it lighter than it used to be by using lighter materials or something. So you can change all of the structural battery pack slash seat unit here, all of the interior things. As long as all the pieces that connect to everything else remain the same, you can make all the changes you want. So think how much flexibility this gives Tesla. They don't have to stop the whole production line if they wanna make a change to the structural battery pack or the seat or something. They just make the change in that cell that they're working on, they then provide the new version of this to the unbox process that they then integrate with the rest of the vehicle through these known stable interfaces and they just keep going with the car. So they can swap out older versions and new versions, different versions, they can test things out, whatever they wanna do. So each one of these cars could be a little bit different because you could be tweaking something in one of these sections and never having to worry about how that's going to fit into the rest of the vehicle because it will just fit because all of the connecting points are remaining the same. And yes, this already occurs with Tesla as they build their Model Ys and Model Xs, etc. but it's going to go to like a whole new level when they get to the Cybertruck and then especially the Model 2 vehicle. So I hope that little software example helps to make sense about how Tesla's manufacturing process is going to be radically different and allow Tesla to experiment and make changes to each part of the car without ever having to worry about how it fits in with the rest of the car. Known stable interfaces are a huge part of Tesla's agile manufacturing process, and I think it's super cool that basically it's a software concept that's been put into hardware instead. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. Concerning the Model 3 and Model Y, I would be interested to know whether your plans have changed and whether you might purchase a Model Y now instead of a Model 3 if you had originally been planning to purchase a Model 3. So definitely let me know in the comments what you think about that. And of course, while you're there, please do like the video so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon and my YouTube channel members. Thank you all so much much. I truly do appreciate the support. You all truly do make this channel possible. And of course, if you want to join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, thank you once again to Artomatic Creates for sponsoring this video. Definitely check them out at artomatic.io slash creates. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.